really the reason I wanted to get you on today is what you were just talking about. Um, I've listened to a lot of researchers, obviously, on a, you know, I'm subscribed to so many podcasts, I can't listen to them all. And, and I, I'm sure everyone has that experience. They're, they're trying to keep up with so many things. But I always, always tune into the free zone because uh, every week I, I find you're talking about things that are genuinely, truly, powerfully uh, solutions to what we're facing instead of the problems and and I like a lot of the memes that you're throwing out there and I've heard you say things like uh, the the solution is not to look for problems and uh, uh, we have to overgrow the government and and these types of memes that you're you're putting out there that I think are are genuinely solutions to what we're looking at rather than the types of solutions that are often offered by a lot of other people who are working in this alternative media and um and I I really like that because. You have documented, as you say, the culture of death that they're they're throwing in their, our face with their symbolism all the time. But uh, but you've also gone much beyond that to to look at ways that we can actually create community and, and something that we can oppose to that or an alternative to that culture of death. So so that's what I wanted to get you on today to to, to talk about. It's it's kind of a broad subject, so I don't know where you want to pick that up, but. Um, uh, basically, I'm just looking at uh, ways that we can create a culture of life instead of their culture of death that they want to shove in our face. Well, we could almost uh, start right where we left off last time, James, uh, in that we were discussing at the very end the ideas of synchronicity. And it was truly this method of experience that alerted me to everything else and made me more understand it. I understood the, the esoteric realms a little better once you start to see the world working miraculously. <laughs> so we have new sciences coming out, like the Institute of Noetic Sciences, that are trying to bring about the concept that mind can manipulate matter, mind over matter. So, you know, same old magical uh, adage that we have way back when, and now it's becoming scientifically proven. So when, when we're looking at our world and we're being given this funnel to, to focus on through the media that's owned by five major corporations and they're presenting everything we see, uh, we are lost in our, our true mental world and caught up in this false reality. Uh, the Obama scandal right now is the current theme with the whole birth certificate and the idea that uh, it's fraudulent. Well, yeah, it's fraudulent, but it was meant to be fraudulent. And you've always got to be able to be one step behind this image before attacking or joining the, the justice uh, society as, as it's becoming. So when we start to, to when you start to realize that there is actually a, a force out there, well, the Illuminati, the brotherhoods, the religions, they have all had a name for this. They've called it the, uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Hebrews called this the Shekinah, which I believe played in on the Shekinah, Shekinah. Uh, and this is the goddess force. This is the nurturing force of the aspects of God. And when we start to see that the Holy Spirit actually is working in each and every one of our lives, but we're detracting ourselves from it by studying all information instead of experience, then we start to lose touch with our true base of reality. Now, just to, to put an example on how this is done in the negative sense is Walt Disney. Now, Everybody loves Walt Disney. It's funny because I could talk you know, bad news about anyone, but don't touch Disney. But this man, uh, you know, this was a military industrial corporation. This was a, a tool of the military or the Illuminati or however you want to see it, the government, to manipulate humanity into going into war and World War II into uh, paying their income taxes. Donald Duck did more to get people to pay their income taxes than any campaign has ever occurred. Uh, this was Walt Disney's methods. Now, when you start to look into the culture creation manipulation, uh, you see Disney is at the forefront. Lindsay Lohan, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, uh, the Jacksons, you go on and on. They're all Walt Disney. Uh, and then all of the programming that comes out through them. And what Disney does, and you can check this all for yourself, in every single tale, they kill the mother. And so this is the type of methods that they kill the mother in our our true mentality They're, they don't even give you a place to go after the after the girl becomes a princess after the wedding has occurred the story's over and they lived happily ever after after right and then you get to the songs that they're all producing such as britney beyonce uh, all of them you'll find crazy crazier i'm going crazy let's get crazy and they are programming the crazy bitch, as we are, we are calling it now. And this is the brats programming that you'll see in the toys. This is, you know, and so once you realize your entire worldview 
from toys to movies to billboards to news is all orchestrated to bring about this death culture, then you can start to realize how pervasive it is. And then you have to detach, detach, detach. And when you detach, you have nowhere to go. You're like, oh my God, I have no foundation. I have no support. I have no system to follow. And that's when synchronicity steps in and you find out that there actually isn't a beloved system within the universe that's already out there to guide you to the most perfect spot you needed to be. But that requires experience to believe. Synchronicity steps in and you find out that there actually isn't a beloved system within the universe that's already out there to guide you to the most perfect spot you needed to be. But that requires experience to believe that's that's so right and i think you're you're right on the money when you say detach because i think it is more a process of detaching from the system than trying to to revolt against it or anything like that because as a, as i'm sure a lot of my listeners know that that just plays into the system itself and i know deep in my gut that what you talk about is is right and that we have to detach ourselves from the system and and create our own but it's so easy to get sucked into the the culture of justice and vengeance that they're trying to program into us right now and and i get caught up in it myself trying to scrutinize every move of the globalists and look for the next false flag attack and, and things like that but of course if we get sucked into that then we're just going to propagate and perpetuate the system as a whole because it, it just becomes about that vengeance and justice and you talk about how we have to get get over that get beyond that and get through that and and come to a place where we we are truly just about love and peace and understanding with our fellow humans and and that's really difficult to do so it i know it's right but it's difficult to get there and i, I guess i'm wondering how how do we get past that culture of vengeance and justice that they want us to get wrapped up in? Well, I've seen some people transcend this, this mentality, and it usually takes an altered state. Now, that does not necessarily mean you have to take some sort of psychotropic psychedelics or anything to get into this altered state. The altered state is your very environment. So as I watch people go out to rainbow gatherings, now we'll have 20,000 people gather in a national forest away from all ele electromagnetic frequencies, away from all television, media, or programming, even away from any electricity whatsoever. Uh, there's only two rules at rainbow, and that is no alcohol and no money allowed. Other than that, you're free to go. And of course, you know, you won't harm anyone because a tribe is, is self-regulating. People think that if we went back to tribal societies, it'd be some sort of barbar barbaric reality, but it's just not the case. Tribes self-regulate. So anyone that's being a jerk, he'll know it because everyone will treat him like a jerk and he'll get ostracized until he gets over his jerkiness, right? Well, out at Rainbow, when people come out there, I witnessed as they start to lose their trauma. Now we are all post-traumatic stress disorder victims, each and every one of us, from watching these video games to Hollywood. If you see, you know, it's, it's, it's torture porn is what we're getting these days out of Hollywood, things like Saw or even, you don't even have to go that bad to get torture porn. And that's what we're calling it today. So when they get out to Rainbow, I watch as they start to shiver and shake and, and their whole body will start to quake. And they're like, what's wrong with me? I don't understand. And this is the trauma leaving their body. They had never, ever been at a place of peace before, you know, be it electromagnetic frequencies or just the stresses of existence on uh, in our uh, material network. It, it, it releases out of you once you get yourself out of that particular frame. And I've watched this happen to so many people now that I now understand what's going on and I can calm them through it. And once you get through it, then you feel blessed and beautiful. And all of a sudden the universe starts working in your favor. Now, when you walk out of rainbow, now in rainbow, everyone is walking around. Uh, we build a community, we build kitchens and you realize that the, the food is the inevitable source of everything on, on humanity's planet because we focus around the kitchen and so every project focuses around kitchens and they make these big beautiful kitchens out of just the dead wood around uh, with uh, blazing ovens and everything else so that you can go and eat you know, some beautiful lasagna or whatever you go out into these woods and you're eating gourmet food which is all naturally brought created with love which is another thing okay so we're ingesting all of this food around us from these people that hate their jobs <laughs> so you got somebody who hates your food making your food and this is a really bad thing because everything is internalized everything comes you are what you eat and this includes the love vibe that is placed into the food that you eat now at rainbow you're constantly eating blessed food and these people are happy to, to generate it no one's getting paid so it's all about just the love 
And once you're walking around and everyone's telling you, I love you, I love you, I love you, you know, you almost get sick of it. And, and everyone's making eye contact. Everybody's your friend. And yet they're all different religions. They're different cultures. They're different colors, creeds, whatever. They're all different out there, but they've all unified in this altered state of rainbow. And you walk out of rainbow and you get to your first uh, town and you stop, of course, at the convenience store to get whatever you need for the long road. And all of a sudden you're under fluorescent lights. The people around you are no longer looking at you. They're all looking at the ground. No one will socialize you with you. You walk around the grocery store. No one will talk to you. I actually had an amazing moment in Australia when a little child came up and asked me to get her this candy that she couldn't reach. And I realized that no child in America had ever come and asked me such a thing and would never be allowed to. Uh, we're not conditioned to love one another. We're conditioned to fear one another. And so I've seen it in festivals when people come together. People that would have never spoken to one another on a city bus are now in a bus just chatting away because they're all in the same altered state. And that's not drug-induced. That's simply location -indu and environment-induced. So these are the methods that we start to find is that the only solution for trauma-based mind control uh, is is safety and security so we have to start to nurture these people that are victimized that don't even realize they're under this victimhood and then they shift that's right and you bring up such an important point about the the food because i think a lot of it does come down to food and ultimately whatever you know culture we try to build up as an alternative to what we're being placed into it will center around food and i know that's a big part of what you're encouraging and, and talking about so, so tell us about some of the things that you're involved with um, around that idea of gardening we are now working on a film called Outgrow the Illuminati. And uh, so we want to kind of combine these two thoughts together so that you can see the, the mistrust and then the trust. And what we have easily found, you know, as I found from Rainbow, is that everything does revolve around the food. Now, I was once working for Pizza Hut, and they came to me and said, uh, you know, you make the best pizzas in the entire region. Can you come and teach all the rest of the Pizza Hut cooks how to, how, your secret? And I looked at these corporate schmucks and I just laughed and said, you know, love is an ingredient. And I can't teach that. And their jaws just dropped. They didn't know what to think. They didn't know what to do with me. And, and I, I didn't take the position. I, I didn't want the position. Uh, I was teaching everybody about HARP and Y2K and everything else at that moment. Uh, so uh, while, while serving them pizza. Right. <laughs> so, so one part of this is planting seeds. One part is that we're trying to barrage people with the truth and beat it into their skulls. Now, the main uh, thing here is that you just need to plant the seed and let it grow. You can't, you cannot force a plant to grow. You cannot do it, force people to, to believe what you believe. You can only plant the seed and let them grow. So that's one aspect of this growing apparatus instead of trying to, you know, beat this into your head. Uh, but what we started was a full community garden network. And it really, once again, fell together all synchronistically as uh, our, my entire block decided it was a good time to start growing food. Um, I think it's a natural instinct, you know, like animals sensing the flood or whatever. They, you know, the earthquake's coming and they're running. Uh, humans are all of a sudden like, wow, this is just obvious. I've got to grow some food. And it's happening all over with us. And so we've got a big worm farm going and we filmed how to create this and showing you how low our budget is and how small you can do this. And we're actually comparing and contrasting this with another permaculture project that's going on in the in north of town, which is actually a government sponsored, granted uh, permaculture farm. And I think we're going to beat them on no budget whatsoever. I think we're going to outdo them. Uh, so we're going to document that at the same time. And so we have... We have the worm farm going to get the good uh, compost tea that we can then feed all of our plants with. We've got Ormus manufacturing going on, which is a, a method to create monoatomic elements, such as monoatomic gold, palladium, erodium. Uh, and this all comes out of dead sea salts or out of primordial salts uh, to you release it. And we're going we're gonna to have a film on this. You release it through using a, a lye. Uh, uh, that's the, you know, the chemical lie and food grade, of course, and you bring it right to the right pH and it, it actually releases all these monoatomic elements and, and detaches everything else, which you wash out. And so now you're left with just the very base ingredients of life structure. And we have been placing this stuff on our plants and a, they've tripled in size. It's amazing what this stuff does because all of our soil has lost all of its ingredients, all of its nutrients and things. So we're learning the methods to bring all of this together. And we have Jay the terraformist, who's been a star on my show a few times. We moved him in. 
And so he's living on my couch now. And I love finally being the couch guy instead of the surfer. <laughs> but, so at this moment, we have Gong the Planet, who is a crew that's going around doing uh, rhythmic healings or sonic healings on people. And we have uh, Jay the Terraformist here, and we have a number of the neighborhood all gathered, and we're all just digging in. And we're going to plant and grow some of the best food that we could possibly ever imagine. And it's going to be more abundant. That's the thing when you start to discover that a seed makes another billion seeds. You know, it's just exponential. Uh, you can just, abundance is here. It's just a matter of releasing the mentality of having money. Uh, consider that we are building this garden, improving the land, doing all of this work. And this is not my property. I am paying a landlord to live here. And yet I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to improve his land. I'm going to build all of this garden and, and then leave it for the next renter uh, if I, when I leave here. So how much of the culture of death and the lie that uh, humans are a scourge on this planet and that there's overpopulation and we can't have any more people, how much of that lie do you think is propagated by the, by the idea of detaching us from nature and trying to convince us that we can't do anything like this on our own? Yeah, all of it. And they know, you know, they know that's why they're passing house resolutions to end these type of uh, community gardens and to regulate gardening and, and the release of the vegetables out of such things. They don't want this. They know that we can empower ourselves with this. None of it has been true. Uh, most of it came to us statistically based from the Club of Rome, and they put out a book called Limits to Growth. And it was this that was passed through every institution, through every university. I had to read it in college to say that humanity was expanding in such a grand rate that we would overgrow the planet in no time at all. Now, the truth of the scenario is that we find that people could, uh, the entire planet's human, human population could probably fit comfortably in Texas. And as you drive across the United States, as I do so often, you'll find that there is plenty of empty space. The problem is, of course, water generation, power generation, and the problems that we have for uh, just food, water, and power, and structures. Uh, now, these things are open. We just had the, the Pope talking with Mark Kelly on the International Space Station, and Mark's trying to explain to them, uh, to the Pope, about how uh, all of their new energies that they're using in the space station would free humanity and end all war and strife. And the Pope's like, yes, yes, you know. Uh, that was just the most recent with the Pope and the International Space Station. Uh, as we start to look and as this proliferation of intelligence is coming to us through YouTube, I mean, one of the greatest mystery schools out there, YouTube, anything you want to learn, <laughs> there it is. Uh, we're starting to learn all these new techniques on, on generating energy, generating things and, and being able to you know, run cars on water or run power sources with no problems or heat your house with uh, biomass. You know, you've got your compost going outside. It's also heating your bathtub. Meanwhile, your bathtub's draining into your, your banana pit. You know, it, it's all one good cycle. And, and we're starting to get a gestalt or a holographic uh, vision of how this all works. Uh, so what we really believe and what we've seen as far as what humans being caretakers of the planet is that the more people the better if we were focused on creation instead of destruction and the more people the more leisure time and the more food and abundance and everything else we would have so we've actually found it to be quite the opposite that there would be more paradise more paradisical gardens around the globe and less climate change less uh, destruction and all of that if there were more humans if those humans were practicing agrarian societies well you you mentioned the idea of youtube as this great mystery school and it's kind of it's humorous but it's actually i mean to a certain extent isn't it true i mean we are living in this age where this alternative media really is sort of the crux of the issue and and without that how would we be able to propagate the message of the culture of life yes it's true i mean my stuff's older than youtube so uh i i uh i've been trying to get this out there for for a while i guess yours too uh and YouTube and the whole explosion of media has shown me I've almost made myself obsolete, right? Uh, and that was my goal. I, I wanted to make myself obsolete. I wanted to set the standard, set a, a direction, say, look, these are the type of things you might want to look towards that are a little outside of everybody's box. And then you can kind of see where things are flowing. And now I see it just proliferating like crazy. There's so much out there now that, that just takes off from where I left. And, uh, and it's great. I'm, I'm so excited that it, it, really worked and and that you know but at the same time there's this dark side as we were talking about the sense of justice 
Now, again, the children are focused on justice, and I know we wanted to stay positive and light, but uh, the dark side of justice being programmed into each and every one of us, now we have a lot of fanaticism coming out where, uh, well, you know what? I lost that train of thought, James. Let's stick to the positive. Let's, let's do that, yeah. No, I understand what you're saying, and, and it's always there. The, the, the dark side of that is always being programmed into us, so... But uh, yeah, we have to we have to stay on the positive and think about what we can do. And uh, and I think you're right. I mean, the alternative media, in in some ways, the gardening analogy is perfect, isn't it? Because you do you pl you plant the seeds and then you get to watch it flourish and and it grows into this incredible behemoth, this 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 leviathan of of so many people out there who are working together to spread this message. That you know, I mean, ten years ago you were talking about harp, and now everybody is talking about harp and. And right. it's that kind of thing. I mean, you plant the seeds and, and you never know how it'll flourish. But then I come in to tend and prune the garden. And so as everyone's talking about harp and saying, look, harp's causing Haiti, harp's causing, uh, you know, Chile, it's causing all of this destruction. Well, there are other <laughs> ionospheric heaters around the globe and harp is the one that you're supposed to be focused on. So at the same time, I have to come back and kind of prune my work and say, okay, now you know about harp. I was trying to express like one example, but there are many examples. There's Sura is their ionosphere Kita in, in Russia. So now you got to be careful not to plant seeds that grow into vines or into uh, weeds because if we if everybody's just now shouting about harp and, and is not informed about the other ionospheric heaters that could also be causing chili or everything then they can use this knowledge to uh destroy america because the only focus has been on the american ionospheric heater so then once you plant the seed you always got to come back and, and prune it a little bit yeah that's right and it's interesting because i was actually just watching a, a clip from some russian tv channel where there was some they were interviewing some governmental figure who was saying that uh who was i don't know if he was drunk or what but he was saying that uh we were going to destroy other countries with our or, you know with our heaters or whatever just like japan it was, yeah 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 it no, was, you know and, it was it was and uh, hugo chavez and Milos, uh, medavidev they're all harp 9-11 truthers you know, uh, so when you're talking about, you know, uh, Medavidev and Ahmadinejad, they're, they're not 11 truthers and harp activists. So, you know, yeah. you gotta be careful. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. And I think you're right. Yeah, we have to tend the, tend the garden because, um, because it can grow into weeds and vines and all sorts of things. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting analogy to think about. Uh, just incredible, just incredible stuff. The world is a lot stranger than we think, but um, yeah, I guess whatever happens in, in your world, probably boredom is not one of the things that you're ever suffering from. It's true. You know, sorry, I choked on my water. <laughs> La laughing at that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because it's true. I, I, I look around me and I'm like, how do these people have time to have jobs? You know, uh, well, another one of my key phrases and memes that I've been trying to spread there is quit your job, save the world. You know, there, there were two forms of magic that were, were practiced in ancient Egypt to control humanity, and that's talismans and contracts. And what that is, is money and corporations. And so once you realize that these are actually ancient forms of black magic, then you can start to see how they have usurped your very divine power. Because no longer are you looking for what fulfills your soul, you're looking for what fulfills your pocketbook. And in order to do this, then you're going to have to sign a contract. And that's the next form of magic that leads you into a cage. And this very system of magic has been employed since ancient Egypt and has been the constant factor keeping us out of our divine state. Because once you release yourself from contracts and talismans, money and, and corporations, then you all of a sudden will have your world fulfilled with so much abundance and so many people and so many things that you'll wonder how you ever manage to limit yourself to this singular event of going to this job every day. Well, I'm sure that's a message that will resonate with a lot of people out there. So, so on that note, um, we're running out of time. So just tell people again about uh, the website, how they can get in touch with you and how they can help support your work. The last tool that I want to give to the public, and this I'm working on with my wife, Jamie, is uh, Weird Stuff, the Encyclopedia of Weird Stuff. Now, we, we titled it very innocuously just to try and make it so that anyone would open it. And what this will do will unveil the, uh, the culture of death to the common person and give a tool to the people that know what's going on but can't get their friends to listen to them 
to just lay this encyclopedia out in front of them. Now, it began as a magazine, but now it is so thick it's an encyclopedia uh, that you can just lay that out and the people then can say, you know, here, re read this and not even worry. And, and they're going to open their eyes seeing Lady Gaga performing blood rituals on American Idol or uh, Lindsay Lohan in a recent Freemasonic Star Whacker. And you're going to get all the data and the things that you need to show people, hey, things are not as you think they are. I think that might be a good tagline for, for Freeman's world in general. Things are not what you think they are. But um, <laughs> yes. yeah, so it's safe to say you're a pretty busy man these days. Oh, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. honestly. It, and when it doesn't, you know, it takes months and months of back work. So no one sees the product. So, you know, they don't know that you're, you're working so hard. But yeah, I am.